Hello everyone, welcome to my Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Nina and Jill at Crimson Lights are relieved that Chance's wound didn't get any worse and that the jerk who caused it was apprehended. Chance proclaims that the right has been done. Perhaps it was a much-needed wake-up call, as Nina believes. While Chance begs his mother to stop, Nina informs Jill that her son might quit the police. Jill is amazed that it would be such a big change for him. She advises Chance to come work with her at Chancellor so she can teach him the ropes if he decides to leave the PD. Although Chance has no prior experience, he thinks this is a generous offer. Jill and Nina try to convince him. Jill believes he would excel at it. Kyle asks Diane at the Abbott residence where his father is. She wanted to speak with him again beforehand, and he's upstairs. Since he and Audra didn't get along, Kyle cautions her that he probably won't be able to persuade her to rejoin Tucker's scheme. Diane queries whether there is a further development. It bothers Kyle to keep this from his father. When the time is perfect for him, Diane begs him to tell his father. Says Jack, tell me what. Kyle tries to apologize for his lack of maturity in making his offer at Jebot. Jack gives him comfort. To be clear, Kyle is thinking about accepting his offer to become CEO of Jabot. That is fantastic news, Jack exclaims. He queries the reason of the course correction. All Kyle needed was some time to think about himself, especially after Billy called him a spoiled brat. He mentioned that he was working on something, Jack remembers. In spite of the fact that things didn't work out, Kyle says he needs to show himself to his father, and he gives Diane credit for that realization. Jack gives Diane a kiss of gratitude and asks how he might entice Kyle to cross the finish line. Kyle says he's in and doesn't need any more time. It's me for the job. I'm back in my rightful place. Jack gives him a hug. Devon recognizes Tucker in the club dining room and approaches his table. Sitting down, he tells his father, You can't help yourself, huh? This morning I learned something new about you. I refer to your most recent falsehood. You can take no more of it. It's enough. Are you that arrogant to think you're going to get away with everything? Devon asks again. Tucker finds that he's discussing his conspiracy with Mamie. Tucker complains that they've talked about it. Devon is aware that what he stated was untrue. You're investing in Chancellor Winters through her company behind my back as well. Tucker claims he is powerless to control how Mamie uses the funds. Devon is curious as to what his father is pursuing. Tucker says there is nothing. He has always desired merely to be nearer to him. Devon claims he can't believe a word that comes out of his mouth, so that's not happening. I'm done with you, he threatens, telling Tucker to keep his hands off the business, which is Neil and Catherine's legacy, and to stay away from him and his family. Devon pauses as he leaves to give Ashley a cheek kiss. What the hell have you done now? She asks Tucker as she approaches him. Devon tells Abby at Society that Lily informed him this morning that she and Jill had discovered evidence linking Tucker to Mamie's investment at Chancellor Winters. He is forcing her financial company to engage in investments and has deceived him directly. This, says Abby, is terrible. Devon cuts him off, saying he's finished. Tucker, in Abby's opinion, will never be a devoted, reliable father. Though he's not capable of it, he wants to be that for him. Although Devon believes Tucker won't give up, Tucker will do anything he wants. All he can do is work out a way to shield his business and family from whatever he has in store. Abby is going to speak with her mom. Devon makes a decision to break away from the family, saying, I think I know how to accomplish that. Tucker does need to be stopped. After receiving a text from Devon at Crimson Lights, Jill urges Chance to take her suggestion into consideration. He swears. Chance tells Nina, Okay, I know you want to say something, so go ahead. When Jill leaves, Nina makes the observation that she and Jill are never in agreement. There is synchronicity in the cosmos. Chance has no desire to do mathematical calculations while seated at a desk. Will you just think about it, please? Nina asks in an attempt to close the deal. Chance affirms. Tucker informs Ashley at the club that his private situation with Devon is not her concern. 
She tells him his life is falling apart and reminds him they had a grandson together. I'm willing to listen, Devon said, referring to how her daughter and their grandson are impacted by Devon. Do you wish to make repairs? I might be able to help if you quit being such an ass. Tucker acknowledges Devon's frustration. He believes Phyllis is fabricating stories and lies about him. He no longer wants me in his life. Ashley queries what the deception was that ruined their bond. Tucker lied about his investment with Mamie. Devon believes they are conspiring because she has invested in Chancellor Winters and that he wants a piece of the business. It's the only thing that makes sense, says Ashley. He mocks her for having such low regard for him. Ashley will tell you that he's a great grandfather, therefore she'll assist him in making amends. You would actually help me with Devon, Tucker queries Ashley. Ashley understands what it's like to break up with a father and laments the time wasted, and she believes Devon needs a relationship with him. What would she expect in exchange, Tucker wonders. Ashley stands up to go. Tucker bemoans the fact that she fled. She takes a seat again. After they argue, he asks her to acknowledge that everything has been a farce ever since she returned from Paris. After Tucker says yes to her offer, she hurries off, wishing him a happy day while sneering at him. Devon informs Jill and Lily that he confronted Tucker about his involvement and that he had lied. They should be prepared for him since he believes he has some sort of strategy. Oh, we will, shouts Jill. Devon hears Lily say he deserves better. Devon was forced to interrupt him. They all concur that they must discover Tucker's intentions. Devon believes they'll both agree with the proposal he has. A week after getting shot, Chance tells his mother at Crimson Lights that he's not ready to ruin his career. There would be a significant shift, and he is unsure if he would be good at it. He made the commitment to live a life of protection and service. Nina gripes that he always finds himself struggling for his life. Although he is aware that it frightened her, he has been bothered by something. He has spent his entire life avoiding the Chancellor heritage, and he questions whether this was due to his belief that he wouldn't measure up. Nina believes that if Jill knew how he felt, she would smack him. Chance considers that perhaps he should reconsider his role in the family business. For Nina, this is a real-life dream. As Ashley gets home, she celebrates the news that Kyle will be returning to Jabot in the role of CEO. Kyle is committed to working well with others. Ashley reports to the group that she overheard Devon, who is certain that McCall is working with Mamie, and Tucker having a chat. She considers how much she despises Jill. She offered to assist him in repairing his relationship with his son. Jack believes that Devon should be kept apart from his father and that she shouldn't become entangled. Ashley claims Devon should be able to connect with his father and that's not his place. She assures him that it's just a father and son situation and that she has no plans to make amends with Tucker. Jack tells Ashley that she is taking advantage of the bond between a father and son. She should be leaving as she is interfering. Ashley doesn't think it's improper to nudge kids in the proper path. No one connects with Tucker's humanity like his son, even if all the positive energy would convince him to leave Jebot. Jack continues to believe that they ought to carry out his scheme to expose Tucker. Frustrated, Ashley argues that his plan doesn't have high enough stakes. They have nothing if he publishes the piece and it doesn't stop him. Kyle and Diane concur with Ashley. It occurs to Jack that he is outnumbered. On the article, they will sit. Ashley says goodbye to Diane and Kyle and steps out to answer a call. Chance calls Jill at Crimson Lights and leaves a message, requesting to speak with her in person. Nina gives him credit for starting the process. She explains how adorable a suit and tie would be. Chance cautions her against assuming too much too soon. Nina hints that she might spend some time in Geno City. They give hugs. Jill believes Devon's idea is dangerous and demands a degree of trust she doesn't feel at the moment at Lily's place. In his opinion, it's the most effective approach to obtaining the necessary data. Lily believes that this could be their only opportunity to learn about Tucker's activities. Devon would adore the opportunity to refute Tucker's lies. A knock at the door signals that Mamie and Nate are there, and they accept the proposal. Devon beckons them inside. Nate said he was taken aback upon receiving the invitation. 
Davin says they need to talk to them about something really serious. Diane is happy that Kyle followed her advice and returned to Jabot at the Abbott residence. According to Kyle, accepting the COO role was simple, but the next phase of the plan might be beyond his capabilities. Diane claims that he will become a hero, since he will be the one to save Jabot from Tucker. Jack is going to be really proud of him when he learns what he has done for the family. She gets Kyle a hug before going out. After taking out his phone, Kyle texts Audra to let her know he needs to talk. Ashley queries Abby at Society about her conversation with Devon. According to Abby, he went there following his altercation with Tucker. Tucker, according to Ashley, genuinely cares for his son. He doesn't love him enough to be honest, snarks Abby. Devon claims he's done, and she thinks their romance might end permanently. Ashley inquires as to her thoughts on the matter. Abby notices Devon is in pain. Ashley queries her thoughts on attempting to patch things up between the two of them. I couldn't make these choices for Devon, and I couldn't forgive myself if Devon suffered harm once more. She had Ashley to help. Mamie queries if they're at Lily's residence to complete Nate's return to Chancellor Winters. Devon replies that while everyone knows that she and Tucker are working on a plan, they first need her to be really honest. A plan that involves ousting me, Jill continues. There's no use in disputing it, according to Lily. Has Mamie just been using me? Nate asks. He is reassured by Mamie that she sincerely wanted to reunite with him. You were willing to lie to all of us to make that happen, Devon remarks. Mamie says she has no connection to Tucker anymore after learning of his wrongdoings. Why should they believe her, Jill wonders. My ultimate goal has always been to unite our family under one corporate umbrella, asserts Mamie, giving them confidence that they can trust her. Davin promises to give her an opportunity to demonstrate it. She must inform them of Tucker's true intentions. They can talk about getting Nate back into the company, but only if he is honest with them, if she is able to accomplish that. Tucker receives a text from Audra in the club dining room, informing him that Kyle is contacting him. In response, he requests that she pull him in. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.